But in the book of Chronicles, I love this because a gentleman sent me the scripture the day of my birthday of this year. And it was such a blessing to me because of the things that I was going through from the year before. And knew that I needed to hear this. And it was such great. I'm reading out the NASB, but I can read it from the screen there. Uh, Second Chronicles 2017 says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Whatever battle you're going through, you don't have to fight it. So stop fighting it. You don't have to, according to the word of God. If you are born again, saved, blessed, baptized, full of the Holy Ghost, you don't have to worry about the battle no more. Okay? And just tell us to stand firm. Stand firm. Quit going around Taliban and telling everybody your problem. Because then again, everybody else knows now. Have you ever told somebody something that you wanted to tell and they went and told somebody else and the story done got even bigger than it was supposed to be? You know, so stand firm. Hold your position in Christ. Hold your position in Christ and see the salvation of the Lord because God will come through. It all depends on you, what you do. He'll come through. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. And do not be dismayed. In Joshua 1, 9, it says, have good courage. Have courage. Don't worry about anything. Don't be dismayed because the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. That means he's already there. He's been there. He done made a way out of no way that you didn't know. See, before you was even born or formed, he done been there. He done took place and residence over everything and came back and said, okay, let's go. Let's start this. He said, tomorrow, go out against them. Now, this is an interesting passage. Uh, you know, mine say tomorrow, go out in faith them, for the Lord is with you. So keep that in point that the Lord thy God is with you. In the midst of you giving thankfulness, in Ephesians 5.20, it said, always give thanks for all things. Say all. All things. I mean, everything. Everything. You stump your feet, thank the Lord. You know, for all things, give thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thanking God in the midst of all your circumstances. As believers, we should always be thankful, giving God for the life that he has given us. He has given us a wonderful life. You may say, well, I don't have what they have, but you have what the Lord has and what he wanted to give you. God has given you the most precious gift that he's had in his son, Jesus Christ. He has given it to you. Here's my son that has died on the cross for all your sins. The same Jesus that came off the cross that filled you with power to walk through any battle and to stand firm. And we're looking at this situation here. We find ourselves in the same situation as Jehoshaphat was in. He was told that there was a vast army coming to destroy him and the people of Judah. Now he was told this. And this vast army was the men of the Amorites, the Moabites, the Jebusites, whose sight I can't see no sight. All these people was coming just to knock them off. Put yourself in that picture there. Jehoshaphat, leader, great man, found out that some folks was going to come and try to hurt him and his people or his family. And it caused him to go into a national prayer of fasting, which, some, which they always did back then in those days. Even the infants went with them too. They fast and they prayed. If you notice one thing about Jehoshaphat, he didn't go to his neighbor's house and ask them any questions. He didn't go ask somebody, what you think I should do about this? Do you know it's this great army that is trying to come out to kill us? The first thing he did, he prayed. And that first point, we must seek the face of God in everything we do. In every decision you make, seek. The face of God. Seek God in everything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all 
the other stuff will be added on to you. We must seek God. So that's what he did. He went out to the courtyard and he prayed. He prayed. It doesn't matter where you go to pray. There's sometimes I go sit in my little room and I like to be like a little kid. I sit in my swivel chair and I turn myself around in it and go wee like a little kid in my desk chair. Knowing that God is there with me. He's there with you, people. He's with you. He has not left you. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you. Consider the word, because the word is true. And imagine if we just bend with the word and stick with the word of God. Our results will be great. There was an old AA saying, don't muddy the water when it's dirty, when it's clean, though. When the water is clean, don't try to muddy it because nothing's happening. Some of us are so used to conflicts, you know, we got to have some chaos happening in our lives. I can't live today without any chaos going on. Something, something is just going to happen. Well, if you keep speaking those things in existence, it will. Whatever you confess, you will possess. So we got to be careful with those things. Understand that God's got your back. In 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, it says, If my people will humble themselves and call by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will give their sin and will heal their land. That's the word of God. That's what he said he will do. All the thing he asks us to do is to pray. That's all that we have to do is pray and trust him. How is it that we believe what the world says, but we have a hard time believing what God's words say? Google has a whole lot of mess on it. And some of us will seek Google out. It's hard to be thankful when your investment is in all in your circumstances. We push so much investment in our circumstances and forget about God. And that's where our investment should be. In the Lord. Not in our problems. I have problems, but I learned to invest in God. Amen? I learned to look at God because he's got my back. He knows my situation. He knows what I need. He knows what I don't need. He knows what I'm going through. He knows it all. So why should I worry? If he says, I got you, I'm your rear guard. I got you, brother, don't worry. So why should I worry? So we just keep on going and trusting God. So we have to get to that point to where you understand that, 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 that God will never ask you every day, well, how do you feel today, Brother Sanders? Uh, do you feel like praising me today? Uh, do you feel like going with God? will never ask you those questions, uh, how you feel today. He is not interested in your feelings. Sorry. But he's not. He has commanded us to do some things. And we're on a battlefield, people. We are on a battlefield right now. I don't know if you noticed it, but we are on a battlefield. And it's like, how many of us are willing to be used by the Lord? See, Jehoshaphat had a problem that was coming. He acknowledged it to God, how sovereign he was. He acknowledged to God uh, for his wisdom. You know, he thanked God and acknowledged God about it for his grace. He acknowledged God for his kindness and given to them by the way of Abraham. So we should never forget where we come from. It's something about when you get down there, you start giving God praises and you start thanking him. Amen. Start thanking God for your situation. Sometimes I thank God for my knee pain, but I get the Bengay out. I thank you, Lord. You know, I, I thank you for those things, you know. You know, and, and, and Jehoshaphat was reminding God about the promises that God has promised them, you know. You know, we all have promises from the Lord. You know, God knew me when I was in my mother's womb. So he set this whole thing up. He done went way before me, and he set it all up the promises and everything. You know, he knew me when I was in my mother's womb and before he brought me forth. I don't have to go get the promise. The promise will come to me. God's promises will come to me and I don't have to go get them. It will come to me. 
And he is reminding God about all these things, about how good he's been in his life, how good God is. And imagine if we stop and just give God praise over every situation. I was telling Pastor John, as I walk into the school every morning, before the kids uh, get past that door at 720 when the bell rings, I walk that hall with authority, praising God, giving him glory. And the teachers come out the hall, Mr. Sanders? I sure wish I had that kind of feeling. I say, well, you, you can. Just start giving God praises. Sometimes you have to set it up. You have to set your way up. And God will use you to do those things because when you get with, with a bottom line, like I said, we're in a battle in the school system. We're having a battle up in there. So I like to sing my way through the school. And everybody look at me like I'm crazy. Well, God used to foolish things in the world to confound the wise. I don't mind being a fool for the Lord. Who are you a fool for? Amen. I'm going to sing to Jesus. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to sing. I'm going to give him praise because my flesh don't really want to be here. Hello? My, I, my flesh don't want to be here with these little ruly kids, you know. No, no respect, you know. No discipline. Call you everything but a child of God, you know. Hello? If I show you the list of what I've been called, you'll say, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, oh, yes. You're right. You got it on your mind. I sure enough have. But God has been good to me there. The battle was Lord. I won despite all that. I kept my eyes on Jesus. You know, the old theologian Martin Luther once said that the old man was buried in baptism, but he's a pretty good swimmer. Well, this old man and me wanted to swim up for a little bit. But it's a good thing he's buried, you know. Because there's some times there that things will happen that, that would aggravate you, will bring about a circumstance, but you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Hello? You know, you got to take that circumstance and kick it to the curb, and don't, but keep your eyes on Jesus because really you want to act up. You want to act up and do something wrong. But how it is with Jehoshaphat, after he got through praying, God gave him the answer that he needed. Isn't it funny when God sent someone to tell you something what he already done told you? It's called confirmation. Some of us don't like that. Hello? Because when God tells you something, you're like, ah, well, okay then, but eh. then when somebody else comes along and to tell you exactly what God said, you're like, damn, you know, shoes, Lord, I don't want to, you know, to, hey, pastor, I've been there. I didn't want to do that. No. What are you talking about? Who you been hearing from? God will send someone to come bring you confirmation. And that is a good thing. Sometimes we need to hear something from somebody else that God has for us. He will come to inform you and give you the exact word that God says, it's going to be okay. I got your back. Don't you worry about a thing. It's going to be okay. Just keep on marching. Just keep on going. And that was the message he delivered to Jehoshaphat. It's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Don't even be discouraged. Be, you know, don't, don't worry about what you see. It's going to be all right. Don't let the numbers frighten you. I know that there is a vast army on the way, but keep this in mind. The battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. It is God's battle, people. It is God's battle. Not yours. We don't have to fight everything that comes in our life because somebody says something. Well, I'm thinking I'm just going to go tell off sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so myself. Sometimes you just got to just give them to the Lord. Amen? You ain't got to go there and tell them off. That just makes you look even worse. <laughs> you talking about starting a feud. <laughs> the last thing the pastor needs in the church is a feud that fills and McCoy's. Hello, you know, get the, I'm going to go tell off sister so and brother so and so. I'm going to give them peace of my mind. Hey, I, I used to do that years ago. <laughs> I, well, I don't know what you think, who you think you are. Next thing I know, my whole day is messed up. I can't even pray. You know, you know what I mean? Because I stepped out of line. Instead of me just take the advice what someone said, it probably was right. I just didn't want to hear it. Usually folks are right, we just don't want to hear it. We don't want correction. We don't want to be corrected. Yeah, stepping out of line. I remember that. Probably about 35 years ago being a young preacher. Oh, yeah, I learned quick. 
The little things you learn is to invest in God and to give God all your praises. You know, give God all your praises. And at the same time, he tells us not to fight in this battle. It's all in God's hands. And God did the same thing with Paul when he set the stage up for him in 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, so we fix our eyes on what is not seen, but what is unseen. What is seen is temporary, but what unseen is eternal. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix them on Jesus. Fix it on Jesus, not your stuff. You know? Not uh, my home in the cul-de-sac. Not my new BMW. You know, not, but fix my eyes on Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the healer. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the one that you trust. The one that you trust that will fix everything that is going on in your life. Fix your eyes on Jesus that has conquered the world already, that has died and rose again and is present now. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And on my second point, I will tell you, give God praise in advance for your victory. Don't wait till you're in deep troubles to give God praises. Don't wait till you knee deep done run your marriage or whatever into the ground and you want to give God praise. It don't work. You're going to have a hard way climbing up there. Give God praise now. Start praising God now for everything. Whatever it is your need is, praise God for it and watch and see what happened. Because with Jehoshaphat the next morning, the King Jehoshaphat has seen the men get into place. He had his singers, which is the praise team. Luke Nim, that's the praise team. Get ready. Get ready. We're finna go into battle. Something's getting ready to happen. And the men with them, they had the instruments. He said, go to the front of the line. I was telling the service people this morning that we need our young folks to get it together. You know? We need you to get it together because we're going to have to send some of y'all to the front of the line for us. So that means we need to continue teaching our youth about the life of Jesus. So that they can continue being strong, so that they can grow strong. But we need to continue feeding them and start getting them at the front of the line to help us in this battle. Because one day we will not be here. And we're expecting them to be the future of the body of Christ to go forth. So I want to make sure I invest in them. Hello? And them going forth. And the only way to show them how to get to the front of the line is to go to the front of the line yourself. Hello? If you ain't going to go, then they ain't going to go. So sometimes we have to go to the front of the line in order to see that it's okay. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. It's going to be okay. Let's trust God. So that's what he had them do. Encourage them, he said. Let's go to the front. He encouraged them not to be afraid because God was here on the battlefield with them. See, wherever you go, you take him with you. He's with you wherever you go. You can't say, Lord, I think you better stay here today, but I'm going to leave. It don't work like that because if he's in you. And some of us need to be careful where we take him. There's some place we can't take the Lord. Hello? You hear me? Hear that now. There's some place he don't want to be. So there's some places we can't take him. So we need to make sure that we stay in the realm of the word of God where, where we go. You see? We may think nobody don't see us, but he sees you. He knows everything you do. Everything. By God, me, I was telling them I was eating a honey bun one night trying to sneak that bad boy in. That bad boy was so good, full of glaze, and my wife came walking out the room and said, what you doing, huh? Oh, Lord. Here it is, 9.30, almost 10 o'clock at night. Honey bun and a tumbler glass of milk. Lord, knowing I didn't need that, my cholesterol is bad enough. But I wanted it, Lord. 
and she come walking out the room like the Holy Spirit. In the cool of the day, uh, hon, what you doing? Oh, nothing, babe. I just get ready to put this back in the drawer. <laughs> and I'm chewing on rip. Trying to get this in the jar, you know. You know, she sees everything. You know, that's like with God, you know. What you doing? Uh, do you think that's right? Uh, no, well, why are you doing it? And Lord knows I didn't need that, honey, but I, I'm sorry, but I ate it. She went back in the room, and when I started hearing that snore, that was it. It was time to eat it. It was time to eat it because I knew she wasn't getting back up. Hallelujah. Boy, <laughs> oh, let me tell you, ain't nothing like a good old sweet honey bun or a fried apple pie from Donut Bank at 9 o'clock, 10 at night. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Woo. Oh, let me get back. I was just... Just, just kind of got to me for a little bit. You know how some just get to you, you just want to, let me just reminisce on that. You know, don't a bank close what time today? <laughs> Help me, Lord. Somebody better pray for me right now. <laughs> amen. Oh, amen. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know, I know some of y'all be sneaking some stuff now. Mm -hmm. Got them chocolate baby roots in your pocket at work. You know, kind of melted. Looking at it, yeah, I know, I know, I done seen it. Yeah, yeah, you got it, she knows, look at it, see, yeah, uh-huh, I know, come on now. <laughs> you know, as the army began to march, King Jehoshaphat gave the signal for the praise team to begin their singing, and the men start playing their instruments. And they were singing the Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endure forever. Now imagine that. If we would just fix ourselves to give God praise all the time. Be thankful in all time. Praise God in everything. Praise God all the time. I go lay down at night and I just say, I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I give you glory. And when the Lord wake me up before I hit my feet, I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're letting me see another day. But we need to learn to give God thanks. We need to thank God for our healing. Let's not talk about our healing. Let's just thank the healer for our healing. Let's give him praise for everything that he has done. When you can look at your wife and she's there, you got a roof over your head. You got food in your box. You got an automobile to drive. Hello? You got a little money, ching ching, in the bank. You doing okay? You need to praise God. I paid my tithe. So everything is good, you know? We need to praise God for those things. Praise God for our kids. You know, I thank God that I raised a child like this, you know. Even though we raise them, they're going to go through some bumps and scrapes, but I thank God that they learn something from them. So we need to give God praise in everything. And everything, give God praise. And that's exactly what they did as they was on their way to the battlefield. They continue to give God praise. Because God did not qualify us to be ungrateful servants. In the book of Colossians 1 and 12, it said, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his saints in the light, not in the darkness, but in light. And during the midst of their praising and going forth on the battlefield, all of a sudden the enemies got to turning on themselves. And they start killing each other. Why? Because Jehoshaphat and them trusted God. He said, the battle is mine. God has already worked it out for them before they even got there. They didn't even get to set up. God worked it out. They turned on each other. They got to killing each other, slewing each other. The whole field was full of dead bodies. And they just continued singing and giving God praise. Continue singing and giving God praise. Continue singing and give God praise. When someone talks about you, praise God. They have somebody they need to talk about. Maybe you're that important. I came to understand that when, uh, the reason why some people can't support me in public because they talk about me in private. So I don't worry about it. I just thank God they did not dare to support me because they wouldn't have been a good help anyway. Amen? Sometimes you just have to just go that way. 
but giving God praise unlocks the keys and give the angels something to work with. Amen. Praising God, Jesus just come out and just work it all out for you. And the matter, you didn't have to do anything. He done it all. That way he will get the praise, not you. Not man. But God will get the praise for everything. And do in the midst of that whole battle, it took him three days to clean up all the spoil, pick up all the goods to take back with them. They took home three days of spoil, probably some arrows and stuff, you know, stuff that they can use in their own camp for their own self. With that said, because of who we are in Christ, in Luke 10, he tells us that he has given you power or he has given you authority. God has already given you the power and he has given you authority to tread upon serpents, scorpions over every creeping thing. Even human beings, sometimes they creep over when they're walking. He by no means shall anyone harm you. I was telling them this morning about a story happened in the school the other day. The minute uh, Pastor John uh, texted me about today, I said, okay. And I start right there in my class studying. <laughs> and there was a young man in there. He has satanic stuff. He started drawing on his hand. The whole ambulance and all. So I was standing by the door, by the desk where he was sitting at. And he stood up, he looked at me, he said, I hate Jews and I hate Christians. And he had a sign, it was satanic. He said, I am satanic. I worship Satan. So the spirit in me just jumped up and said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, you foul my spirit, come out that young man. And you know what he did? He balled that paper up and he sat down. He just sat down and put his head down and went over there and prayed with him, prayed with him. But he was hanging on this for a long time. And there's something about trusting God and his word and speaking his word before people. Don't be one of these Christians to where you just hide behind the word. Speak it, live it, eat it. Invest it into the people in your community. Invest it in your neighbor sitting next to you. You don't know what they're going through, but the battle is the Lord, but he wants to use you to bring a little peace to them. Amen. God loves you. He's got something for you. He wants to use you. Hello? He wants to use your people. He's not through with you. That He's not through with none of us. There's still work to do on the battlefield. There's still work to do on the battlefield, people. I think one of my greatest joys is being on the battlefield because it builds my character. It keeps me humble, you know, because there's some folks you just don't want to do nothing for. <laughs> Driving a car one day, man had a flat tire. 60 years, 70 years old, I kind of, oh, Lord, I'm trying to get home, you know, coming out of Princeton, doing that case working, and Lord knows I should have stopped, and the Lord whipped my car back around. But I did it joyfully. And knowing that the, the old gentleman needed to talk to, see, I would have missed that appointment if I wouldn't have put my focus back on Jesus. Because he was, he was battling with this tire, trying to take it off. I mean, he was battling on the side of the highway in the traffic. So we need to learn these things. Continue praising God. Continue giving him praise for every circumstances. Every time. For, no matter what's going on in your life. Give him praise all the time. Every time. Don't hesitate. Just mouth off, thank you, Lord. You stump your feet, thank you, Lord. You know, you accidentally cut your hair, thank you, Lord. I did. That's why I'm bald right now. Accidentally. It's a long story back in the 90s, okay? I'm going to tell you, I, was, I used to cut my hair. I'm a Texan, San Antonio. And I was creaming my hair. I was all cool. You know, I had that jerry curl, you know. I was cool. 
I was a lot younger. And uh, I changed the clip on it, right? Got the size, and I got ready to do the top, and the clip fell off. Well, there it goes. I panic. I tried to pace it. <laughs> I looked at it. It was just hair, Carl. Said, it was just hair. It's just hair, dude. Don't worry about it. It's just hair, man. <laughs> It'll grow back. 30 years later, it still ain't grow back. <laughs> hey, man. It grows where I don't want it to grow on the side, you know. <laughs> So I just figured, oh, well. But it was one of those things that I took so seriously. It, was, it just bugged me. I st- you should have seen me standing in the mirror, and I'm looking at my hair and saying, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, my beautiful cherry, you know, panicking, you know, like, oh, my goodness. Oh, how I'm going to fix this? Uh, oh, should I just cut this side off and leave this? Oh, Lord, what I'm going to do? Should I put a, 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 a something in the middle? It was like a landing strip. You should have seen it. I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was just like it is right now, just a straight landing strip. It was bad. It was a bad day in Texas, let me tell you. So I looked in the mirror. I said, oh, well. I was shaking with the clamor. I said, look, I have to cut, cut the rest of it off. So I cut it off, and it's been okay since then. But it was so hard, it bothered me because I was just worrying about the hair. You don't know how long it took me to get this processed hair. You know, and I just put a perm in it, and I had curls. You know what I mean? Whoever seen that movie, uh, 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 Coming to America, with Eddie Murphy? I used to use that slow glow. When you sit on the sofa, you leave a mark in the back. You know, it was so. It was one of those kind of back in the days. Yeah, I'm that old, okay? Yeah, I have bell bottoms too. You know, you know. Yeah, it was one of those kind of things. Enough slow glow in your hair to where you can lean your head over your engine and get some motor oil in there when you need some. <laughs> Amen. But that's what it was. It, that's what it was. Laughter is good for the soul, isn't it? <laughs> Quit laughing at me. But it's, it's true, though. <laughs> it's a true story. I don't, like I say, I don't mind telling on myself. I'm going to tell on myself or the devil will now. I don't mind telling you. Me and my wife don't mind about that. But it, I was so serious about that. That was my hair. I didn't want to lose that. I was expecting to go through life. And when I hit 60, man, have that peaches and herb, long hair slick color, but it didn't work. Not my will, but thy will be done, oh Lord. You know what I mean, man? I mean, I looked at the hair. I was so serious. No, patting it back, but yeah, it's gone. It's gone, Carl. What you gonna do? Stayed away for two, three days trying to figure out how I'm gonna fix this. That's sad, ain't it? That's sad. Then when it dumbed on me, all the amount of money I was saving, didn't have to go to the barber no more. Didn't have to buy no more Soclo lotion and all that stuff, you know. Wow. All I had to get up in the morning and just, you know, <laughs> you know just shake it off, you know. Sometimes you got to just shake it off. But let me just get finished up just for you. But, yeah, you just got to shake it off. And it's, it's been okay. It's been all right. So now at a tender good age of 60 plus, I am, I'm happy with it. It's okay. I'm okay with it, you know, but. When you're 27, 30, it wasn't okay. You know, back in the day, it wasn't okay. You know, all the music out, the good singing music with no curse words, you know, back, some of you, you young folks don't know about that. But we used to have music with no curse words, you know. Good songs, love songs, you know. Lenny, Lenny Williams, you know. When you didn't know how to talk to your wife, you just put on Lenny Williams. He'll sing it out to you, amen. But Jehoshaphat, they went to the battle, and the battle belongs to the Lord, people. And that's what I want to let you know. Seek the face of God in these times. Don't worry about what you're going through. The Bible said, though we walk through the valley. It didn't say, no, you're going to build a tent and sell snow cones. But you're going to walk through it, and you're going to trust God, and you're going to make it to the end of where he wants to meet you. Because he's already been there and he's still there waiting on you. So if the Lord has told you to do something, get up and do it and meet him where he told you to meet him at. Amen. Because he's waiting right there for you. At times when I get sore at myself and bitter at things, I was telling John there was times I I didn't want to stick around. I just wanted to 
get in my truck and drive off. You know, sometimes men know this way. Right? You just want to get in your vehicle. You just want to drive and just keep driving. You know, you just get so tired as pastors. It's, it's tough, you know. We get beat down. We, we, you know, we go through stuff. And sometimes you have to go through a little manure in order for something to grow out of it. You know, you just got to go through it, you know. And sometimes we just, I just wanted to just drive. I just wanted to keep going. Didn't want to go. And one day I told my wife, I said, I was looking at that show, uh, The Last of Alaskans. I told her, I think that's where I want to go. She said, I'll see you later, brother. <laughs> no encouragement there. You know, I guess I got to go by myself. She wouldn't go. But you just feel that way, you know. Just, just want to leave. I just want to go for a long ride. I just, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to, you know, you just feel discouraged over circumstances, you know, just, just like the church, your, you know, your people and, and just, Lord, I just, I just want to get away. Alaska, the cold snow sound good. Imagine me out there in the last Alaskan in a cabin with a hatchet. You know, imagine that, you know, out there, you know, killing bears and eating it, talking about it's good and, you know. You know, I mean, devil dipping in the ice water and like that, that. That didn't sound good to me, you know. Worse enough being up here in Indiana with the little snow they do have here. But after all that, you know, I, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Sometimes you just got to just lift your head up when you get like that and just look to the hills. And your help comes from the Lord. I can look to the hills because of the man named Jesus. Yeah, because of Jesus, because of what he's done for me, I can look to the hills. He died on an old rugged cross. I remember, I think that's one of the best hymn songs that of the old rugged cross. That's where he died. But something spectacular happened three days later. Three days later, he got up early that Sunday morning, and when he got up, he had all power, all power in his hands. And what the Father gave him, he gave it to us already. We have what Jesus had. Amen? We have the same thing that Jesus had. We have the ability to pray. When Jesus went to pray, he went off somewhere. He always going to the other side. You know, ain't nothing wrong that we can go to the other side too. Sometimes we just got to get away and pray. Amen. Just get away and pray. So remember, seek the face of God. Seek the face of God, people. Seek the face of God and give thanks in everything. Just start thanking God for everything. Thank God, even if you don't need him, just thank him for your healing. Thank him for your provision. Thank him for your pastor. Thank him for your pastor's wife. Thank him for your husband and your wife. And your, just start giving God praise. Somebody make you mad, just give God praise. Say, thank you, Lord, because it's not you giving them a problem. Somebody curse you out, down and right, just thank God, and you have to understand they're hurting, and they're taking it out on you but they have no other way to tell you. So give God praise. Keep thanking him. Just trust him through the whole mess of all your problems. And I guarantee you, he will do the miraculous. It is time for the house of God to mount up, to mount up for the battle. Because there's a great battle coming. There's a battle coming. You may not want to see it. They may not want to think it is, but there's a great battle coming. Don't let the devil in your door. You keep God in your home and your kids. Lay hands on them kids every morning. Prayer to prayer of faith. Lay hands on your wife in the morning. Lay, wife, lay hands on your husband and pray for him when he walk out that door. Because we don't know what time is going to be. Because tomorrow is not promised to us. So that's why today we need to give God thanks and give him all the glory in Jesus' name for his name's sake. For his name's sake. Amen? Amen. Amen.